There we go. There we go. <laughs> I told you it was a work in progress, didn't I? Okay, so that's up and running. Awesome. All right, um, so guys, you know what? Welcome to live cameras and stuff. So um, I'm doing this for the first time in a long time. And so I wanted to kind of just see where we are on this whole deal. And so now I've got it down. We're going to rock and roll. And, uh, and here we go. So I'm going to go and mute this on my end so I can't hear myself. And uh, here we go. Let's try it again. Let's pray. See, see, when you pray, God gives you wisdom. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for figuring this out uh, because I know that you wanted me to share this today. And I just thank you, Father God, that we continually walk in your purpose and plan in every area of our lives, Lord. Amen and amen. All right. Um, I want to go through Philippians. And um, what's cool about Philippians is that um, you know, everyone goes through stuff. And so, so let's go to Philippians chapter four and understand that Paul is writing this while he's in prison. And, uh, Philippi is a very, very strong, uh, military base. Uh, they want a victory there. And Paul has been put in prison because he's preaching about this thing called Jesus and Christianity and this person who rose from the dead. And they didn't like that. And they wanted to be um, the 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 Romans and and the Philippians wanted to be the the all to end all, and so Paul's in prison. So understand that he's in prison and writing this letter to the church, and let's again process he's in prison. He's probably been been beaten. He's probably been there for a while, and um, you know. First, second century prisons weren't like the way they are now. Uh, there's no AC. There's no heat. Um, you eat what you can get. Uh, and so it's rough. And so understand his mindset. And think about the things that we go through as Christians. And we complain. We get frustrated. We aren't happy about it. And so it's important to understand that he's in prison. So let's go. All right, Philippians I'm going to start with Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to go with verse 2. And he's talking to someone in the church, and it says, I urge you, uh, Eduria, and I urge synchrony to agree and, and to work in harmony in the Lord. Indeed, I ask you too, my true, my true compassion, to help these women to keep on cooperating, for they have shared my struggle in the cause of the gospel, to, together with Clement and the rest of, of, of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. So verse 4 says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. He's in prison. He's in prison. Rejoice in the Lord always. Delight. Take pleasure in him. Again, I say rejoice. Again, y'all, he's in prison, and he's telling them to rejoice. He's telling them to to keep at the work of Christ Jesus. So again, I'm trying to bring us back to the perspective of what are you really going through right now that is as bad as what Paul is going through. Paul wrote half to two thirds of the of the New Testament, and he was always, for the most part, uh, in struggle and in suffering. So verse four: Rejoice, Lord, always take pleasure in Him. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit, your graciousness, unselfishness, mercy tolerance and patience be known to all people because the Lord is near. Here's, here's what he's saying to us. Let your gentle spirits always be gentle. Your graciousness, be graceful, be unselfish, be merciful, be tolerant, not of sin, but of people, and be patient, be patient, be known to all people. The Lord is near. And then here's the kicker. It says, be anxious for nothing or worried about anything. Again, he's in prison, y'all. 
Be anxious for nothing or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request known to God. So, so let's camp there for a second. He's in prison. <laughs> I keep saying that. That's so important. He's in prison. He's probably been beaten. We don't know how hungry he is, how thirsty he is. And this is this is an ongoing story with him or any disciple of Christ. They're, they're going to face persecution. And he almost, to a point as a apostle, as a man of God, he almost looked for it. He knew that it was coming, uh, but he didn't know where it would be. But he was ready for it because he understood his purpose. And I'm going to read this out of the Passion Bible. And it's really cool. And I'm going to read in starting at verse 3. It says, I would like to, um, I would like my dear friend and burden bearer to help resolve this issue. For both women have diligently labored for me for the prize and helped in spreading the revelation of the gospel along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers. All of these names are written in the book, like meaning, meaning that they're all Christians. And then verse 4 says, Be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life. Wow. Okay, process that for a second. I'm sorry, I was born. Be cheerful and joyous celebration in every season. That means the good times. The sucky times, the bad times, the death times, the out of work times, the persecution times, the your sick times in the hospital times, um, someone dies times, the divorce times. Be cheerful. Be joy. Be joyous in celebration in every season of life. Let joy overflow. For you are united with the you didn't want to want. So what does that say? It says, let your joy overflow out of your life. Why? Because you are you are united. You are acquainted with Jesus, the anointed one. So there's no reason for us to have this long-term depression, this long-term frustration. Why? Because we are united. We are in one body, one spirit with Jesus Christ. Let your gentleness be seen in every relationship. That means your boss your co-workers, your siblings, your parents, your children, your pastor, your church members. Let your gentleness be seen. And it, it doesn't mean that you can't have confrontation. It doesn't mean that you can't have disagreements. But it means that when you have those situations, you're always gentle. You are you you always exude the 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 nature of Christ Jesus. And then it says, be, let gentleness be seen in every relationship, for our Lord is very near. And you could take that two ways. You, you can take it that he's like right here or that he's coming soon, which means that we need to get our act together. But of course, if, if we think about him being right here, we got to get our act together right now. And then verse 6 says, don't be pulled in different directions or worry about anything. Don't be, again, he's in prison, y'all, okay? Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about anything. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. So let prayer lead you, guide you, saturate you, influence you, provoke you, promote you, bless you, anoint you. Let prayer be your air. I like that. L let prayer be the thing that you breathe that, that, uh, that moves you forward. And that, so it says, don't be pulled in different directions or worry about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Wow. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. And then verse 7 says this, Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding. So God's peace is not like our peace. Our peace is predicated on our situation sometimes. Our peace is more like happiness. 
Uh, but happiness is not what we want. We want joy. We want peace. And I said on Sunday that, that the joy of, a, of the Lord is our strength. And so we want God's peace because God's peace is predicated on what he is and what he's done. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends or goes beyond our understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. That's awesome, y'all. Again, Paul's in prison. He's in prison. And so as you go out your day and you have a rough day, you have to deal with your bosses or your coworkers or your family. That's kind of drama. Or you deal with a sickness. You deal with just whatever you're going through. Your neighbor, um, your car may not work today. Um, you, you may have gotten bad news yesterday. Or you may get it today. It says, let God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding, it will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. So the answer is already there. We just, we just got to maintain our peace. The peace that transcends understanding. And then Jesus will give, he'll, he'll give us the answer of how to handle the situation. Don't be pulled to different directions today. Don't be worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. Offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail. Y'all, before you go to work today, just, just sit back and let God know about your day. And let him tell you how to handle your day. And I promise you, your day will be a lot, lot better. So that was it. That's all I'm going to share today. I'm sorry about the little technical issue. Uh, but I fixed it now and I know I'll do it next time. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, that what I've shared and what you've shared through me will bless and benefit someone and that their day can be filled with joy and peace because of you in them, Lord, because of you leading and guiding them, Father. We thank you, Lord, for this awesome day. In your son's name we pray, amen and amen. All right, y'all, that's it. Have a great, uh, what is this, Wednesday? Thursday, Thursday morning. All right, love you guys. I'll catch y'all again soon. See you, bye-bye.